You were in the Situation Room on September 11th. Does it feel like it's been 17 years since that moment? Can you share some of what it's been like since then and in that day? Well, it's a, uh, it's a long time since uh, that time, 17 years. But one of the things I think is important is that we continue to mark this event mm -hmm. uh, and not forget the fact that we were caught off guard, lost a lot of our citizens, and we have a continuing obligation to make sure that that never happens again. I want to pull up a photo I think we just showed of, of the Situation Room on that day. What was that like? Well, uh, I was initially in the Situation Room and then was called down to what's called the PIOC, the President's Emergency Operations mm -hmm. Center, where the Vice President and others were really managing this, con this, uh, this crisis on behalf of the President while he was out of Washington. And, you know, people forget that we did not know whether this was a one-off attack or the first of a series of attacks. So there were three things we needed to do. We needed to, one, reduce the risk that we would be vulnerable to a second attack. We had to get all those thousands of airplanes out of the air. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we needed to get the Defense Department to deploy its assets to defend the country if there were further attacks. And third, the intelligence community had to figure out what happened or why, who was behind it, and is this the first of what may be a wave of attacks? You talked about uh, now, 17 years later, making sure we are never caught off guard again. Chris Ray, the FBI director, was out this morning talking about what the current threat is and, and where the danger might come from today. I want you to listen. So I think the threat, today's terrorism threat, still includes sleeper cells, Al-Qaeda, all the kind of major terrorist organizations that you would think of. But we're also very focused now on homegrown violent extremists, which are people who are largely here already in the United States, big cities, small towns, coast to coast. And these are people who are largely radicalized online. Do you think the U.S. government has a handle now on how to combat some of that online radicalization that we're seeing? I think we're doing better, and that certainly has to be a focus. But one of the things that we've been doing on this U.S. Institute of Peace-led task force on preventing extremism is to deal with the problem that extremism since 9-11 has actually spread. There were 2,000 terrorist incidents worldwide in, in 2001. There were 10,000 mm -hmm. in 2017. And one of the reasons is that we have not been effective in preventing the uh, s spread of the extremist ideology that is used in some sense as a cover or a pretext for extremist violence and terrorism. And that's one of the things we focused on the task force. We want to develop a, a bipartisan consensus about how to prevent the spread of extremism. So how do you get there? You know, I think back to that speech that, that President Bush at the time gave, remember a week after 9-11, he came here to, D he came to the Islamic Center in Washington and he said, the face of terror is not the true faith of Islam. That is not what Islam is all about. Islam is peace. That was a striking moment, I think, for a lot of people in this country right. to hear from the president. He, and he was right. Uh, what we were beginning to see was uh, American citizens upset and enraged by what happened on 9-11, understandably making uh, life uncomfortable for uh, believers of the Islamic faith in the United States. And he really wanted to, to call the country to pull together and focus on the real problem, which is those terrorist extremists who really are perverting Islam in the name of what is essentially a, a political a, a, a agenda. Is that a message that you think is being uh, declared loudly enough from the current administration, or is there work to be done on that front? I think there is work to be done on the issue of prevention, but the administration is doing some things. They have, uh, have got a, a stabilization effort going on that is trying to increase the coordination between the uh, various departments of government to deal with stabilization of conflict states. They're talking about the issue of fragile states, these states of bad governance that are vulnerable to being taken over by extremists and terrorists. Uh, I think they, are, they are, 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 are making an effort. We want to see whether we can build on what the administration is doing and what the Congress is yeah. doing to get a bipartisan national effort on this problem. Thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Why don't you subscribe? It's really easy. Just click on that button down there. And for more news from MSNBC, click on any of these videos here for the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more videos from MSNBC with our newsletters. Head over to msnbc.com newsletters to sign up.